you guys haven't met before, uh, my name is Tara and I'm here tonight because I used to go to UWA um, and I was pretty heavily involved in the club scene and I'm here to talk about my experiences on committee and how that's related to my life today as Laura just said. So I'll be talking about 15 minutes and then I'm running a 20 minute workshop so you can put your pieces of paper away um, and the workshop really is to allow you to look at your club and your committee and assess what is and isn't working for you and provide an, uh, an avenue for development and improvement. So to give you a little bit of information about me, um, I'm 23, I went to Como Secondary College. I studied neuroscience and psychology, so a science degree, and somehow that took me five years to do. Um, <laughs> I did take a bit of, tra bit of time off, I travelled around the US, I worked in New York for six months volunteering, um, and I, I loved UWA and everything about it, um, especially the social clubs, and I was heavily involved with leisure. So I was a fresher rep in my first year, and then general committee for two years, and then the publicity officer for one year, and then the vice president for a year. And the year I was vice president, we won Best Club. Um, I also was kind of involved with Science Union, helping out events, and I was also the social officer for UWA Boat Club, like the rowers. Um, I finished uni in the middle of it last year. So for the past few months, I've been taking the SciTech bus and like traveling to schools and pre uh, presenting science to kids in remote communities. And like the whole time I was studying, I was working in nightclubs and bars. And then over the summer, I was always working at the music festivals. Um, and I took the festival work pretty seriously um, and I worked for a company called Perth Social Club um, and I've worked there for four years and the past three years I've been the beverage coordinator which made me responsible for like ordering the alcohol, um, getting it there, getting it cold um, and managing festivals such as Big Day Out, Future Music Festival, Good Vibes, Summer Days and a few months ago I got offered to work for them full time which I have just accepted which is really exciting and I'm now their event manager so I'm responsible for the management of those events um, and the, particularly the bars at those events. Um, and I also entered a three year, a two year contract to become the general manager of that company. So I'll be running events in Perth, like running the biggest events company in Perth. And it's got absolutely nothing to do with neuroscience and psychology. <laughs> but what I've learnt as part of being on my committee and being invited to clubs is what I do every day. So my role in leisure, um, basically, you know, leisure's a drinking club. We like to organise lots of events that involve alcohol. Um, and so organising things like liquor licences, confirming venues, um, calculating how much alcohol to purchase, money floats, um, these are all things that I did on committee that I now do like, on an everyday life, every, in every day. And I, like, when I was on committees, I never thought that anything I did would relate to what I would do later in life. Um, but I know that the skills that I learnt then obviously has got me to where I am today. Um, so in that sense, I recommend that you guys while you're on committee, you take the opportunity to learn, try, and do as many different things as possible, even if you think they have absolutely nothing to do with your life. Now, I know I'm not an expert on how to run clubs and what's best for each committee is different, um, but when I was asked to talk tonight, Laura asked me to talk about like some do's and don'ts about being on committee and how to make things run a bit smoother. And I was like, ugh, I've got no idea. So I asked a couple of people in the room what their problems were in committees. Um, and one issue came out a lot was that committees interest seemed like really high at the start of the year. But then at the end of the year, like interest fades. It's like, yeah, start of the year, people are like, it's summer, it's all like happy fun times, everyone's like, woo! And then by the end of the year, your committee's falling apart and nothing's really happening or you've got like a core group of five people that come to everything and you don't even remember the name of your other general committee member. Um, and so I feel like every club has had varying degrees of this. Um, so I, obviously a lot of stuff happens, people, start failing units, realise they should actually start studying. Um, people drop out of uni and things like that. Um, and obviously it's to do with the weather. But like what, what I'm asking is like, what do you guys think you can do to make it better? Um, one of the things that we do at leisure is we, have, we go on mid-year Rotto. But at mid-year Rotto, basically the whole committee and all the friends of committee go to Rotto um, for three or four days and just have a really good time hanging out and you go to lots of different people's houses, you get to meet a lot of new people, and that creates the same experience like you have at the start of the year in creating new friendships, and I think that's one of the reasons why the leisure committees is so strong and friends of leisure are so close, is because we hang out outside of what we do in the clubs, and we take the time outside, yeah, outside of uni to do that, and that we catch up, have regular catch-ups, so not just at the start of the year, in the middle of the year at mid and then at the end of the year, we go on like, trips down south together. So it like really holds the committee together. And I, I know there's a few committee members, a few committees at uni who don't do that. 
So if you're struggling with that, that's one thing I can probably recommend to you guys. Uh, another issue that people mentioned um, was that there's a lot of conflicts on committees. So the best way that I could describe it is everyone, everyone's really passionate about helping out and people are really headstrong about their ideas and that, often, and that means people clash and they butt heads. What I ask you to remember is that everyone on your committee is a volunteer and although they're all part of it for different reasons, they're all wanting to work together to make something great. And it's really easy to forget that everyone on committee is working on a common goal, especially when like little Jimmy is demanding that something be one way, and then like little Sally's like, no, it's gonna be this way. And then little Johnny's super stressed about uni, and then like little Tommy Two's girlfriend just broke up with him and he didn't come to the committee meeting and la 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 la. Like all this stuff happens and you just get completely lost in the fact that yes, we're all different people, but you're all trying to do the same thing. So I think if you guys came from a solid ground together, and as a president, you really need to take a step back and yeah, okay, everyone's different, has got different opinions, but you really need to take that on board and remember that you're all there for the same thing. Another thing with your committees, even though there's disagreements and things like that, obviously everyone does want to help out. And I feel like sometimes we don't take the time to acknowledge and thank the people in your committee who volunteer so much time and effort and put in such great work to create the events that you do. So remember to thank your committee for the work that they do and the time that they put in, because it's quite often missed. So I just want to say thank you for all the time and effort that you guys put into your clubs. And at my graduation, I think it was like the VC's assistant that said, um, if you leave UWA with just a piece of paper, then you haven't really got a degree from UWA. Some little version of that. You probably heard it before. And it's really true. But we totally take it for granted that our uni has all these great opportunities. Like, look how many clubs there are. And you guys are constantly electing new clubs. I was taught that growing up, that all conflict stems from broken expectations. And that all conflict can be resolved by seeing those expectations, taking responsibility where they're not met, understanding the impact of those expectations, and creating a possibility for what's next. So it's like a bundle of words. So let me like break it down. So there's expectations on us. Every day, moment, moment by moment, people expect things from you. you. You don't expect me to suddenly strip my clothes off and walk out. Like, you expect me to sit here and talk. Um, so there's like those sort of crazy expectations. But then there's ones that you really don't think about. Like when you get your license, you, pay, you agree that you're not gonna speed, you're not gonna drink drive, that you're gonna maintain your car, that you're gonna drive safely, that you're not gonna talk or text while you're driving. So basically that you're not gonna break the law. But you break the law anyway. And you don't realize that these expectations are on you. And what happens if you don't follow those rules? Obviously you get fined and you go to jail. So breaking expectations in society has consequences. But then there are also social expectations. So I expect that I'm gonna have sex with my boyfriend at least a couple of times every week. And, <laughs> and I expect that my mom is gonna buy me a birthday present. And these expectations exist within your committee. <laughs> Definitely not what I meant. So, what I, what I mean is there's social expectations in your committee. When I was on, a, on committee as vice president, I expected that the president would have led the club. I expected that the treasurer would have all the money stuff sorted out by themselves. I would expect that publicity officer would have all the posters done and all of that sort of stuff done on time. And when that stuff wasn't met, when those expectations weren't met, that's when there was conflict. Um, so like if my mom didn't buy me a birthday present, I would be super pissed off. Um, so what I want to do is relate my experiences on expectations to committees. So I used to have this thing that as vice president, I expected that all committee members should be at ticket sales. <coughs> like when we'll if they weren't there, then ticket sales weren't going to go as well as they should. So they definitely should have been there. And if the event was a failure, like then it was going to be because they weren't at ticket sales. So I'd post on Facebook, hey guys, ticket says at 12, you know, everyone be there. And then when five people would rock up, I'd be super pissed off and upset and angry. Or even worse, I would feel like I had failed. Um, and so I have to look like, what is the consequence of me having this expectation on my committee to be there and that not being met? And again, I'd feel a certain way, probably bitch about the people that weren't there. Um, I would then sort of punish them 
and I would give them bad or like worse shifts at events. I would invite them to my birthday parties, I wouldn't be as friendly towards them, and then they would like revert and not want to be part of the club as much. I wasn't doing anything to create like a society and a fun committee. Okay, so now this is when you guys actually have to start doing some work. So what I want you to do is I'm going to give you two minutes and think about what expectations you have on your committee when those expectations have been broken and what has been the consequence you've put on your committee by those expectations being broken to you. So what I wanted to get out of that exercise is for you guys to realise that other clubs are going through very similar things that you guys are um, and that there are a lot of expectations uh, and there are a lot of breakdowns. So what do you do about it? Like you can sit there and you can yell at your committee and you can blame other people, but you can't change what other people do. As leaders, you guys need to take responsibility for the actions that you have or haven't taken in regards to the things that are and aren't working in your club. So what I mean by that is, like I realised me getting angry at people who weren't at ticket sales. Um, I, I was exactly that, I was getting angry at them. If they weren't at ticket sales, I was getting angry. I was making them wrong. Um, I was like bitching about them. And even worse, I was trying to dominate the situation to make it better. And well, that didn't work. And so I really had to sit there and take responsibility for the fact that I was doing those things, that I was bitching about my committee. Like, I was talking about them behind their back. I was giving them longer shifts at events. I was making them feel wrong for not being at ticket sales. Now, they had other things on, classes, uni schedules. Like, sometimes I wasn't there as well, and I would still hate on them and make them be angry at them and make them feel bad. Like, I had to take responsibility that I made other people feel like that. So what I want you guys to look at is where is the source of upset in your situations? What can you actually take responsibility for? So like what Maddie said before, you know, if you have new committee members, when do they get told what they should do? When do they get told what they shouldn't do? As presidents, you guys are never told what you should and shouldn't do and that's not the way that life works. But if you have an expectation on committee members that they have to be to, you know, 80% of ticket sales and they don't go there to 80% of those ticket sales. What consequences are there? If I speed, I'm going to get a ticket. If I speed again, I'm going to get a ticket. If I speed again, I lose my licence. And I know at work, if I do something wrong, I'm going to get a warning. I'll get a second warning and then I'll be fired. So life has consequences. If you don't meet expectations in other situations, there are consequences. And we never set that up in committees and we find it weird talking to other people about that. But if people know what those expectations are on them, then one, they can adhere to them, so you can take, res you can take responsibility for setting up those expectations and letting people know what they are, but then also what happens if they don't meet them. So for the next five minutes, if you guys want to talk in your groups about um, what you can take responsibility for in your committee, what you can set up to do differently to have things not be the same and sort of what direction you want to take from thinking about your committee and the situations that happen in your committee from this. But I just want to get a point across to you that as all well and good as it is to sit here and think about the things that you're going to change or do differently or take responsibility for, are you actually going to do it? Wanting to do something and having good intentions to do it doesn't mean that you're going to do it. So I invite you guys during this break to take the opportunity to write down exactly what it is that you're going to do and to keep hold of that piece of paper. Or put it into your diary if you want to have a general meeting, if you want to have an OGM. Put practices in place so that you are going to take action. And on that note, I'm going to handball you to Laura. So thank you guys for your attention and for listening.